I know the transfer portal has played a big part in their, in their you know, way to improve. Can you talk about something, a team that can go from 9 and 20 to you know, being very you know, 13 and 2? You said it. I think you answered your own question. Um, if that was a question, uh, Joni's going to see the yeah, The transfer portal has made a lot of teams better, a lot faster. Um, and they're a classic example of that. Joni has done a tremendous job in getting players that she needed, and we all have. And um, when your field goal percentage defense is ranked one, two, whatever it was last week, one this week, that tells you that she's emphasizing again the right things. And. Um, we do score a lot of points. I've said that before the season even started. Um, hopefully our field goal percentage defense will get better. I think a lot of ours is we hadn't been on the floor together for a long period of time. And uh, a and is, is, is doing exactly what they should do to get better, and I have much respect for her. Hey, Coach. Um, with their bigs, Lauren Ware and Janiah Barker, uh, just what are the challenges that they pose, especially with Barker uh, as uh, talented as she is? Well, Barker, I think, signed with Joni at Georgia and came with her. Uh, so that tells you what she thinks of uh, Joni. And um, Ware, I think, transferred in there from Arizona, maybe. Size is the first thing that you'll notice. Uh, Barker creates a lot of problems away from the basket. You know, she'll shoot the three ball, she'll take you off the dribble. Uh, and I think Ware compliments her now to where she doesn't have to be down on that block like she was a lot as a freshman. Let's don't forget Kulabali that transferred there from Auburn. She was a post player that they're now playing at the three. So you basically have three post players in their starting lineup. Rogers comes from uh, Oregon. Um, very familiar with India from when I was at Baylor, and uh, she is a, uh, their, their point guard. She's the one that makes them go. Hey, Coach, what scares you the most about their defense? Just us having turnovers, them getting turnovers, being active. Um, I think any time you lead the country in field goal percentage defense, I don't care who you play, you're very active. Uh, when I say active, I don't necessarily mean speed and quickness. I just mean uh, concepts, philosophy. And to do it with that many transfers this quickly, that tells you they're, they're working on it every day. And, um, you know, I thought Ole Miss was, was outstanding, and now we're fixing the – uh, fixing to face a team that is uh, ranked higher than Ole Miss in, uh, on the defensive end of the floor. Uh, are you expecting to see people that don't press you press you now? Nah. No. I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about that. We can get the ball at the floor. That was just uh, trying to make something happen. Uh, Haley and, and Poe, I'm, I'm very confident in their abilities, and uh, we just didn't get rid of the ball. We tried to beat it off the dribble and ran over people and got caught in traps, and uh, certainly we prepared for it. We just did not handle it very good. Do you need to have more movement to the ball in the situation? No, no. We, we, we were in the right spacing. We just didn't deliver the ball to the right people at the right time. Another question will be about your bench. Do you feel like you need to get more? Got to, I've got to gain confidence. I've got, and it starts in practice. And listen, I've told them this in the in the locker room and in film sessions. You can't just play six players for the whole year. Now I'll do it if I have to, but that's not the plan. The plan is to have some of the freshmen step up and the bench players. And I don't want to say bench players, but some of the people that don't start. Give me confidence to put you in the game. And I can't base it on games. I've got to see it every day in practice. And I'm looking for that eighth player. I'm looking for that ninth player. Certainly with KP gone and with um, Samaya's injury, that shortened everything. But um, I hope as we progress that they progress and they make me play them. Yeah, kind of 
uh, along that same line, um, just how have you managed or how, how have you communicated, you know, staying out of foul trouble and trying to obviously keep your, your players on? Well, I don't talk much about foul trouble because I feel like if I do that, they won't be aggressive. I want an aggressive basketball team. And uh, if running over people is, is one of your fouls, so be it. Um, you have to be aggressive to be a very good defensive player. And uh, I think you should just um, keep doing what you're doing. Um, don't stop what you're doing. Our foul, fouling has not hurt us. It might make you sit for a little while while somebody else gets some minutes while you know I monitor your your situation. But I don't. I'm not going to sit down and talk to them about not fouling. Um, now, if it was fouls that were just ridiculous, uh, then certainly. But I think our foul our foul situation with a couple of them has been uh, you know just being aggressive and and it just happened. I, I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and look if they were good calls or bad calls. Last game, Poa came in, had some big minutes, had some big stops. What have you seen from her? And I feel like she doesn't get enough credit for what she does for this team. Poa, and it starts on the defensive end that she needs to be talked about. She had three or four charges. Uh, she is going to keep – she's going to take the angles defensively to stay with a quicker player, to keep them in front of you and out of the paint so our entire defense doesn't break down. But she did that last year. She got two charges in the national championship game. That's what POA does. Uh, I think that POA and Haley sharing the point guard position is ideal for us right now. And when POA is out there, there's so many, well, it happened at Ole Miss. Just move Haley to the off guard some when Michaela or when Flage need a break. Um, but I have confidence in uh, knowing that I've coached her now for two years you know she's been around and I, I, I know what to expect from Poa I think that Haley's situation is it's she's still in that learning curve she's she's playing a position that's very difficult and yet we need her on the floor too I don't recall you face a lot of teams that out rebound you so what makes a good rebounder in this league just one want to you got to want to rebound it's dirty work number two you got to have a, a feel for where you are on the floor and where that ball is going to come off and I think Angel and Maro are doing just about all they can what we've got to get is that third and fourth rebounder every night not just every now and then I'd love to have Flage and I'd love to have Michaela get seven or eight rebounds every night along with Morrow and uh, Angel. Uh, we preach it every day. I think that's a habit somewhat for wing or perimeter players because they've never had to go in there and do that. They'll go in there occasionally in high school, but gosh, can you imagine if Flage shoots the ball and there comes Michaela, you can't block her out, and then Michaela shoots the ball and there goes Flage. Well, that just helps Angel and Morrow tremendously. Kim, I know one of the transfers that they got is Lauren Ware from Arizona. Mm -hmm. She brings a lot of stuff. How has she just changed kind of what joni has been able to do the last couple of years at A&M? And then I guess to another follow-up with Haley, what do you think is next for her in being able to just get closer and closer to being able to, to operate and, and, and run the point like, like you prefer? Well, I can't tell you specifics on where. Uh, when you transfer, you have to learn a whole new system. And it's obviously been uh, very comfortable for her because she's really playing very good. Size is size. She's still the same size she was at Arizona, probably just getting more opportunities now. Um, Haley gets more comfortable by being on that floor every day. We need to remember Haley was out the entire basically month of December. Uh, I think people take for granted um, the point guard position. It's not something that a lot of people uh, can learn later in their careers. I know there are some that, like in the NBA, they're trying to make some of these guys that were big time scorers in college become point guards so that they can make a team in the NBA. It's hard um, because it's not, it's, it's not, it has nothing to do with scoring. Haley can score the ball. 
What I have to do is I have to continue to help Haley, whether it's setting more on ball screens for her from the top um, against presses. It's make sure we go against those presses every day. Um, it's not lack of effort. She gives you all the effort that you could possibly ask for. It's sometimes just timing. Get rid of the ball before you take one more dribble. Sometimes it's just the little things um, that um, become more comfortable to her as she repeats them every day, this repetition. A few questions. Um, you've seen your share of 2-3 zone and people sagging on Angel offensively. What is the challenge about ADM stylistically? What are they going to try to do to you? Well, we haven't seen much of that this year, and you know why? We're scoring the ball at every position, so who are you going to, who are you going to help off of? Um, you saw a lot of that last year, but we haven't seen much of that this year. Uh, we expect a and to do what they do. They, they play you man-to-man. -man. They'll throw a little one 2, -two half court at you, but um, <clears throat> when you're trying to build a program and you have a decent team and they're really good on the defensive end, why are you going to change anything for any other team? Uh, they may tweak a little thing here and there you know, defensively, but um, you, your identity pretty much is what it is by now, but you might tweak something. You might throw something different after a timeout or, or if there's a run by a team, a change of pace. Um, but we anticipate them to come in here and do what they've been doing all year, card in man. You remarked after the game, you know, having two girls with national championship rings gives you kind of an, you know, just a, an advantage last, uh, I guess, almost. How refreshing was it to see your kids Respond the way they did. We had a team obviously breathing down your neck, took the lead briefly, but you responded with a with a with a eight nine zero run, and then got back in control of that game. I really am watching our team. Um, I watch their body language. I watch what they say to each other. I never saw them get rattled. It was like even when they took the lead, there it was like let's play, let's get back out there. They feed off of crowds on the road. You'll see them do this. You'll see them do what they do. It's um, it's really funny because I've done this a long time, and I've, gosh, been so blessed to coach many great players and teams and championships. And guys, I, I've never seen anything like this. Um, I thought just the championship was. I can't explain it, but it's still happening. When you have that many people during the Christmas break still, school's out, um, come to the game at Ole Miss, we're going to see that probably at every away game. And um, that's good for all of us, but it's sometimes I want to I wanna freeze the moment because I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen people hang around an arena after the game to get a picture, to get an autograph. I've never seen them crowd your bus and you have to have security to get to your bus. I mean, these are things I watched on TV when the Beatles were, you know, Beatlemania. And I'm just like, when Angel walks there, it's just this screaming. And then when Flage is this screaming. And I'm thinking, we're doing this in women's basketball. I'm sure it's like that at Iowa. Um, maybe it's just those two programs. I don't know. I'm not saying great crowds because I've had great crowds before in all my years, but there's just something electric and crazy about it. And it doesn't phase our team. I, it, look, it's a long season. If we get beat, it won't be because of the crowd on the road. They view that as they're coming to be. They're coming to see LSU. That's the way their approach is to it. Uh, Angel's never going to fly under the radar, obviously. But with Michaela and Flyjay's improvement, can you just speak to her, how Angel just goes out and just does her job and does what she's supposed to do? I've said this to you guys. Angel could lead our team in assist. And I have to tell her, you can't pass that shot up. She would love to lead our team and assist. She's going to find the open player. Angel is a hard person.
person to defend because one of her strength, she's a big, strong body in there, and you, you might get in front of her to try to block her out, but she's, she's hard to block out. Um, you might stop her first shot because she brings it down low, but she follows her own misses so hard, and that's where she picks up a lot of fouls against the opponents. Um, Angel is very willing to sacrifice whatever it takes for her team to be put in a position to win another championship because that that just far, that, that's what you play for, and she got to taste that. Uh, she doesn't care about double-doubles. She knows she can go get a double-double anytime she wants, um, but she has help now. And when you have that much scoring around you, you don't feel probably the weight of the world on your shoulders. And not that she did last year. We had a very good team last year, but it became breaking Sylvia's record. It became, I got to do this. It became that. Not that she ever talked about it, but I know in her head she had to think about it. Um, that's over and that's done. Her deal now is, gosh, let's let's see if we can't make another run at it. And in your career, how many true freshmen do you think have played all 40 minutes in a game before, like Michaela did? Maybe two. Um, I would say, and this is just off the top of my head, I would say uh, Griner and Odyssey Sims. When I think back, you know, those two possibly could have and probably did as freshmen. Time for a couple more here, guys. I think we've talked about this before, but do you like the kind of the pace of the evolution that you're seeing out of the team? Explain what you mean. It's kind of like you said, Haley figuring it out, everybody kind of figuring out their parts. Well, you ideally would have liked it to come quicker, but I couldn't control what took place with all the distractions and on conference you can't control those things but what I do like is that we're learning it's like on the job training we're winning ball games and learning uh, most of the time you lose ball games and you have to learn uh, we're winning ball games and, and learning and getting better and and addressing it with them there's there's no secrets in that film room um, make them talk make them see where they can get better and uh, help each other and a, a lot of helping is trusting each other. And how do you trust somebody? It's when you're around them all the time, you know their strengths and weaknesses, and I'm not sure we know that yet on the defensive end. Uh, effort is fine, but it's sometimes more than just effort. And um, I really believe as we play more, uh, we'll get there. I really believe that. Finish up with Kessel there in the back. During your time at Baylor, you faced a lot of Gary Blair teams. They were physical, they were fast and rebounded. Do you see a similarity? I know this is Joni's second season, but is there a similarity that you see from her? Just I don't. I don't. Joni has been away from you know that setting uh, and been her own you know in her own program at Georgia. When we played Georgia, it was not that that type of defense. Um, now I say that, and they may do that tomorrow, but. No, it wasn't the full court pressing. It wasn't make a game ugly. It wasn't, she doesn't, that's not her. Um, they're just solid. They're just solid with their fundamentals and their effort, but it's it's a, it's just different. It's not like that. Or not from what I've seen on film. Thank you, guys. All right. Y'all be good. Watch the beautiful